Hey everyone, this is Daniel from What Obi Plays, and today we're going to be doing a full teardown of the Asus ROG Ally X. Now, some tools that you're going to need are a Phillips Double Zero screwdriver, a plastic spudger, a spudger that has a hook, which will be useful for some ribbon cables, a pair of tweezers, and a guitar pick. Now, in order to protect the joysticks from getting damaged when we're unscrewing the back shell, I like to use the cardboard stands that the Ally X came with, along with a microfiber cloth so that the screen is protected and the device doesn't move around too much. There are six screws that secure the back of the shell to the device and the bottom middle screw is captive so it will stay attached to the shell while the other five can be removed. So we'll go ahead and unscrew those now. Some of these screws, like the top left and top right screw, might not come out as you're unscrewing them, but they will definitely come out when we remove the shell. So now we're ready to remove the back shell, and we're going to take our guitar pick and do a this kind of motion, and go around the edges of the device and gently undo the clips. Once we've done the bottom and side edges, now for the top edge, I like to take my guitar pick and run it along the top edge and that should be enough to undo all the clips. Now we can start to take the back shell off, and you want to make sure that you don't yank the shell because there is a ribbon cable hidden underneath that secures the M1 and M2 buttons. Also the two screws that were stuck in the shell popped out, so now I can put them on my magnetic mat. Now to disconnect the ribbon cable, we can take our tweezers and gently lift up on the tape, then take our spudger and flip up the locking mechanism on the ribbon cable, and then pull the ribbon cable out. Once our ribbon cable is separated, we can take our back shell and set it off to the side. To disconnect the battery, we can take our spudger and push down on the locking clip, and then grab the insulated part of the cable and pull straight out. Now removing the SSD is not required for the teardown, but if you wanted to remove it, you would unscrew the single black screw, and then you can wiggle the SSD out of its socket. As you can see, I've already upgraded to a 4TB SSD, which is great for storing a large number of games. Now if all you wanted to do was upgrade your SSD, you would put the new one in and replace the screw, reconnect power, and then you can put the back shell back on. But since we're doing a full teardown, I'll go ahead and leave the SSD out and we can continue on. Now we're ready to remove the joysticks and the process is going to be the same for the left and the right where you're going to take your spudger and you're going to lift up the gate on the ribbon cable, pull it out, and then you have one, two, and three screws to remove. The process is the same for the right joystick, so we'll take our spudger and lift up the gate, pull the ribbon cable out, and then you have one, two, and three screws to remove. Now a tip that I have for staying organized, especially when disassembling internal components, is to put the screws on your magnetic mat in the same pattern that you took them out. So here you can see that I'm removing the three screws and I'm putting them in the same pattern, which makes it really easy to stay organized, especially when reassembling. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't drop screws inside your case like I did, which is where the magnetic screwdriver can really come in handy. Now once you have the screws out, you can then go from the front of the device and push up on the joystick to remove it out, or you can grab the daughter board and pull it straight out. Now you may find with the stock joysticks that the daughter board can get caught on the alignment posts on the shell, so you might need to take your spudger and kind of pry up the daughter board, but these TMR joysticks come out really easily. Now that the right joystick is out, we can remove the left one. Another reason why I put screws on my magnetic mat in the same pattern that I took them out is because certain screws can be different sizes. As you can see here, the top screw is significantly longer than the other two, which makes it really important for reinstalling because you don't want to put a long screw into a small socket. Since we've removed both joysticks, we don't need the cardboard stands to prop up the device anymore and we can put the device right on the table for additional stability. Next, we can remove the triggers. And for the left trigger, there are two screws. And for the right trigger, there's just the one screw. The other screw we've already removed when we remove the joystick. Once you've removed the screws, the trigger assembly will lift right out of the shell. 
Now we can remove the battery, which is secured by one screw on each side and two screws along the top. Once you've removed the screws, the battery should just lift right out of the case and we can set it off to the side. Now we can remove the vibration motors, which are secured by one connector and one screw. To remove the connector, grasp the sides of it with your tweezers and gently rock it back and forth to pull it out. Then grasp the sides of the vibration motor and pull it straight out of the case. Then repeat the same for the other side. We can now start prepping the motherboard. There are three screws remaining that secure the motherboard to the shell. One for each CPU fan and the final screw is next to the speaker connector. This will be the last screw we remove. So let's remove both fan screws first. In order to access the LCD and Wi-Fi cables, we will need to partially remove the left CPU fan. Grasp the side of the fan and gently peel it off from right to left. I've already done this a few times so my tape is a little loose, but yours might be a little bit difficult to remove the first time. You don't need to disconnect the fan cable, just set it off to the side. Now take your spudger and run it underneath the two Wi-Fi cables to pop them off and gently move them out of the way. Then take your tweezers and carefully work your way underneath the insulating tape on the LCD ribbon cable and remove. Now you can use your spudger to flip up the connector lock and pull out the ribbon cable. Since we don't need to remove the CPU fan, go ahead and put it back in its spot and run your finger along the tape to secure it so it doesn't flop around when we remove the motherboard. Only a few more cables to go. Take your spudger and pry out the speaker cable. Then we have one ribbon cable for each joystick LED ring to remove. Flip up the lock and pull out the cable. The last cable we need to remove is for the power button. Just take your spudger and pop the connector off, and now we're finally ready to remove the motherboard. To remove the motherboard, we will remove the final screw next to the speaker connector. As you remove the screw, you should feel the motherboard start to pop out slightly. Making sure the LCD and Wi-Fi cables are out of the way, I like to grab the bottom part of the motherboard, pivot it up, and then pull it straight out towards you. If we flip the board around, we can see some more insulating tape covering up some chips. We can also get a better look at the CPU cooling assembly with the two heat pipes leading to the two fans. Our D-pad and action button membranes are captive, held to the motherboard by these parts that anchor through the board, which is nice so we don't have to worry about misaligned membranes when reassembling. Now set the motherboard off to the side so we can take out the buttons. The D-pad and action buttons can be removed with tweezers or just your fingers. If you're wondering what the bits of hot glue on my buttons are for, click the subscribe button as I'll be making a video on this mod and how it greatly decreases the loud clackiness of the Allies controls. As we can see on the shell, the buttons are keyed, so each button will fit perfectly and only in one direction. The same goes for the D-pad, which has a notch at the bottom. Now we can remove the speakers, which are secured by three screws. The speakers are not directly mounted to the shell, but instead have these yellow rubber gaskets which let them move around as the device is pumping out bass, which is a pretty cool design detail since the Ally X has great speakers for a handheld. With the screws removed, we can pry off the speaker. Here you can see a bit of dust on mine, which can just be wiped off. We can also clean the dust filter on the shell if needed. Go ahead and flip the speaker back into place and secure the screws. Now we are ready to start reassembling the Ally X. Reinstall the D-pad and face buttons, making sure to align the keys on the buttons with the slots on the shell. As you can see here, I struggled a bit with my ABXY buttons but just take your time and make sure everything is aligned and you'll be okay. Reinstalling the motherboard is the most complex part of the reassembly since we need to be careful not to pinch any of the cables. The general process will be to insert the board at the top of the shell then pivot the board down. However, 
we need to make sure the two joystick LED cables, speaker cable, LCD, and Wi-Fi cables are out of the way. We don't need to worry about pinching the power button cable since it's positioned in a way where it won't get pinched when pivoting the board down. Holding back the LCD and Wi-Fi cables, insert the board at the top of the shell. Then slowly lower the board until those cables are above the board, but don't put it down all the way. Now this is where the other kind of spudger with the hook can really come in handy. As we hold the motherboard slightly above the shell with one hand, we can use the hook to pull out the speaker cable from underneath the board, as well as the two joystick LED cables. The right ribbon cable is the most difficult since you have very little clearance to get your spudger hook in there. I know I make it look easy, but this was something I definitely struggled with the first time. Double check that all the cables are above the board and aren't pinched underneath. We can now fully seat our motherboard in place. You should feel the board slightly pushing off the shell. That's okay and due to the membranes. But you shouldn't feel any more resistance than that, otherwise you're going to want to take the board out again and make sure nothing got pinched underneath. The last screw we took out of the motherboard will be the first screw we put back in, then we can reinstall the right fan screw. Peel off the left fan again so we can reinstall our LCD and Wi-Fi cables. Make sure the connector lock is up, slide the ribbon cable in, and then lock it down. Then take our insulating tape and reinstall it over the connector. For the Wi-Fi cables, their positions on the motherboard are marked with a white W and B so you know which wire goes to which port. Go slow and take your time reattaching these, they can be a bit finicky. Reinstall the fan, run your finger along the tape to secure it, and then put the screw back in. To reinstall the vibration motors, pick them up by their sides, then find the pockets on the shell and push those into place. Make sure the thin metal strip on top is aligned with the two black alignment posts on the shell and the screw hole is visible. Do the same for both sides. We can secure the motors with the top screw, but save the bottom one until after we have reinstalled the battery. Then plug the connectors back into the motherboard. You can use your finger to push the speaker cable back in place. Then for the two joystick LED cables, the Ally X has these nice little blue handles that make it really easy to take your tweezers and guide the cable back into its connector without damaging the cable itself. Finally, use your finger to push the power button connector back into its socket. Grab your battery and making sure to avoid pinching the vibration motor wires, set the battery back into position. It should fit perfectly with no resistance. The two side wings on the battery assembly should be aligned with the alignment post on the shell. All screw holes should be visible. Then put the four battery screws back in. To reinstall the triggers, set the trigger assembly into position, and then for the right trigger, we're going to install the left screw, and for the left trigger, you can just put both screws back in. Before we reinstall the joysticks, we need our cardboard stands and microfiber cloth again to help us prop up the device. Put the left joystick back into place, making sure the daughter board fits with the alignment posts, all three screw holes are visible, and the ribbon cable is above the board. Then we can put the three screws back in, and use our tweezers to reattach the ribbon cable. Repeat this process for the right joystick. To reinstall the SSD, move the battery cable out of the way, then slot the SSD at a slight upward angle, 
and then pivot it down and secure it with the small black screw. For the battery cable, make sure the connector lock is in the downward position and then you can push the connector straight down onto the socket. Then push the lock upwards to lock it into place. To reinstall the back button ribbon cable, I like to grab the blue handle with my tweezers and with my other hand, grab the shell and align the connector. Once I've guided the connector back into place, I can flip the lock down with my finger and secure the black tape over. Now we can flip the back shell into place and go around the edges of the device and press together to attach the clips. Then we can secure all the back shell screws. The Alix has some kind of sensor that detects when the back shell has been removed, so in order to turn the device back on, we first need to plug in a power cable. Plug your cable into either USB-C port and wait for the battery LED to turn orange. Once that happens, you can disconnect the power cable and turn on the device. And that's the full teardown of the Asus ROG Ally X. If you thought this was helpful, give the video a like and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please consider subscribing as this is my first YouTube video ever, but I plan on doing more teardowns like this as well as some mods like the hot glue mod on my d-pad and buttons that I briefly showed during the teardown. Thanks and have a great day.